Hello, welcome back. Today we are going to go through the first proper demonstration of Evernote. And of course, since it appears that with the exception of one or two people, no one here has any direct experience with the program, I'll go through, as usual, the basics, the formatting features, the interface, because eventually, as we did with Notion, your next digital assign assignment sorry, will be the creation of one page in Evernote. Only this time, hear me now, and then we'll go through the details later when I post them. Only this time, the content of your Evernote page is decided by me, because at this point, we're in the fifth week of the semester, I think, uh, we can try something a little more complex. And therefore, we'll try, we'll attempt together, the 45 uh, students that are in this class to create a small wiki about the Evernote experience. That is to say, each one of you will choose a different YouTube video. I'll explain how we're going to do this. Basically, I'll keep track of what videos are picked by every student and post them on a page that you'll have to double check to make sure you're not duplicating the work of someone else. We'll pick not any video. Of course, you find a lot of how-to videos. We don't want them. Of course, you find a lot of uh, commercial kind of videos where someone is basically uh, demonstrating what they can do, the skills they can teach through their own private courses or private academy. We want actual user reviews, not how-tos, but reviews of some kind. We want videos that are uh, longer than seven minutes because anything shorter usually doesn't have much to offer. And after you pick a video, uh, one other rule will be that the video has to be from 2020 or later because that's the new Evernote. Whatever appears before reflects the old interface and is lacking some of the added features to this version or this generation of versions of Evernote. So each student will be a different video where a user or even an expert of productivity is commenting, not just illustrating, not just describing, not just demonstrating, but commenting on the features of Evernote. You will embed the video in your Evernote page, something that of course will be demonstrated in class. You will create different sections, a section devoted to the summary of the video, a section devoted to key phrases, just the key passages or quotes, short quotes that are uh, good to understand the point of view of the user, and then your, let's call it, analysis of the video where you react to the video, where you explain what you've learned from the video, what you think is important in that video. And as I said, we'll create a small wiki because you will, using a function that will be demonstrated today, you will make that page public on the internet, not just share it with me this time, you'll make it public. And uh, we uh, then I will collect all those pages, all those links in a separate page on Notion. And we will use keywords also that uh, will, will tag the content. And again, we'll uh, demonstrate that as well, okay? So for now, all you have to do is get familiar with the process and then Friday or at the beginning of next week, I will post a detailed list of requirements for the Evernote assignment. And next Wednesday, next Friday, we will discuss the details once again. And I can provide help both during in-class demo, in-class activities, Wednesdays and Fridays. And also, of course, in my office or in my regular office in the library or in my Zoom sessions on Tuesdays 
Thursdays or at other times that are more convenient for you. Today is, is mostly a, a demonstration, just, just focus on the screen and then Friday we'll try something together and eventually my with Evernote should be easier. What I would like to do is, during Friday's classes, have someone who shares a link, allows me to place their page, their testing page, not the assignment page, just a regular testing page, a random page, and then I can put it on the screen and whoever did that page can offer their comments about their user experience, etc etc okay to make this a little more interactive I'll be sitting in here so that I'm being captured by the camera together with the screen feel free to interrupt at any moment for clarifications or expansions we said last time we looked at Evernote that this would be a typical interface, but not really the only fixed interface that you can apply to Evernote. But a lot of people keep this format on the screen, whereby the first column on the left shows all the options. Home is one of the addition. The home page is one of the additions to uh, the new Evernote, where you can pin certain notes, where recent notes will appear. I'm limited in terms of what I can show you because I'm actually using Evernote. I have almost 10,000 notes, including tax documents, uh, private reflections. So I'm always worried that if I show you my home page or some other aspects that I'll get into something uh, too private or something, I would have to remove from the YouTube video because it includes my social security or my credit card number, uh, et cetera, because I use Evernote a lot, not, for my in, not as much for my intellectual endeavors at this point as for my uh, whole, to keep track of my life, receipts, uh, loose ideas, readings, uh, et cetera. But in here, any of the items that you see on the left side can be expanded whenever you see the triangle or uh, arrow next to them, the shortcuts or the notebooks or the tags, then from there you can access the whole list of tags, the whole list of notebooks. And some of the notebooks can be stacks. A stack is a notebook that includes other notebooks. Or I can click on notes, tasks to create visualize a complete list of the notes, which I can sort by time, by tag, etc., or a complete list of current tasks, etc. And you can see also I can access notebooks that were shared with me, and it's not really working uh, that, that well. For example, unless they've changed that recently, when a student shares a notebook from me, then I cannot delete that. It, it stays with me forever unless the student unshares that with me. And the work chat, again, would, would be limited. This is not really being marketed as a corporate tool. They're marketing it as a personal tool. As I said, this sidebar that you see in black can be uh, uh, taken off the screen. The next column is the result of whatever you select on this side. So if I select notes, I'll see the list of recent notes. If I select task, you'll see in the second column the list of tasks. And basically, as I said before, the good principles of this layout is that you have the general, the local, a bunch of notes, or a list of, of, of tasks, and the specific one note that you have in front of you. The idea is, of course, that you should have an atomic view of the notes. That is to say, you don't want to have a note 
that goes on for screens and screens where you have to scroll and scroll and scroll. Because once you do that, then you limit the efficiency of the system even when you pull out a note containing information that is relevant to you, you still have a minute or two minutes or you have to use control find to find it. Whereas if you limit the amount of information per note, then you leverage the power of the search function to bring in all the notes that are relevant, but within each note, within a screen, or at best two and, or three, not by scrolling much, you're able to see what you were looking for. But again, it's open to interpretation. It depends on your goal. You can use Evernote to write a book because you'll have some notes that include the data, the documents, PDFs of articles you want to review and mention. And, and then you could have a note per chapter, or better yet, a note for per section, and then a notebook per chapter, and a stack of notebooks that would be your book that you compose, because this would be the best way to approach the composition of a book, because I hope you're not trying to write your papers from the first to the last paragraph. That's not good practice. That's not supporting your mental activity. Whether it be a paper of five pages or a book of 200 pages, you always go by filling up parts that are in between the beginning and the end. And you only take care of the introduction or the first paragraph and the conclusion at the very end. Never start with the first paragraph. It makes either, either for something that is too simple or something that is biased. Because initially you don't have a real view of, of the whole work, not as much as when you've completed the work and you know what road the work has taken, which is not to illustrate a simple thesis as you would have done in high school, okay? Now, even though this is the layout, you can very well, if you're working on a note, just click on the expand icon in the top left corner and just focus on the note which is what we will try. And let's see if I can, yes, with Control Plus, I can make this big enough. And at this point, you should be able to follow. Do you want me to zoom in? Are you okay in the back? Okay. So, you see right away that Evernote <coughs> is not directed at a certain kind of professional worker or employee because one of the conspicuous differences in terms of coding style between Notion and Evernote is that Notion being done by programmers for other people that are working with that kind of mindset allowed everything virtually, everything, 99% of the things to be done through the keyboard because someone who's being productive wants to type and type and type, including typing codes without having to move the mouse around, select, uh, pull down menus, etc., because eventually it is time consuming and it doesn't matter if you have to learn a few tens of shortcuts, key keyboard shortcuts, that's nothing, right? Compared to the hundreds of instructions in C++ or Python, etc. That's something you can master in, in a week at best, if not a single session. In here, since, as I said, this product is catering to personal user, note takers, people who want to keep track of everything in their lives from tax receipts to books they would like to read, movies they would like to watch, uh, articles they want to review, be able to review articles they bring into the system from the web clipper. The, Based on, on that target audience, the number of codes that you can apply is limited. So for example, you can type a hyphen and then if I add a space, if I click the space bar, you see that it becomes a bullet. And then I can type, this is the first 
from the room. Again, I'm a slow and terrible typist. I use speech recognition for that reason, but I'm limited in this environment. I use Dragon Naturally Speaking at home and it, it doesn't run well on a small tablet and especially a tablet with 64-bit emulation such as my Surface Pro X. It struggles with a big program such as Dragon. This is the first item in my list. And then you see that there is automatic formatting. When I press enter the second bullet, I don't have to type another one. This is another list item. And if my list is done, instead of pressing enter once, which generates another bullet, I press twice and you see that it goes back to the beginning of a line. Other things that I can do with my keyboard, I can use square brackets, opening and closing, and then I press and uh, space bar, and I have a checkbox. Okay, and I'll create a list. No, I, I'm not going to buy bread, of course, I'm going to buy gluten-free bread. And then I'm going to buy gnocchi and paste of sauce. And again, when I'm done with my list of checkboxes, I just press enter once more and I get out of automatic formatting. And of course, I can then say, oh, I've bought this. I can bring this to the supermarket, have it on my phone app and just click out these items. Other things that I can do automatically include, well, I should be able to do a numbered list. Let me see, because of course, uh, I cannot always keep track of the various formatting, but let's see what happens when I press one and then a dot. Yes, so a number, a dot, and a space bar. I have a numbered list. And of course, I can go on and on, and when I'm done, I press enter twice. Let's see something that I would be able to do in Notion because I don't necessarily want to start a list from one. It could be the continuation in a series of lists scattered throughout the page. So let's see if I do the same with number 33, dot, spacebar, and again, yes, um, this is a continuation of another numbered list, okay? And I can continue that if I want to. Something else that I can do with my keyboard easily is add a horizontal line. I just press three or more hyphen, and then you see they change into a horizontal line. Of course, Something else that I can just put with my um, keyboard is links, clickable links. I don't need to code them. I can just write www.google.com. And again, once I, I have to apply some other command, right? Because my typing opens up this potential instruction, create a link. The closing is the space bar. So I press spacebar and you see it becomes clickable. I can click on this and you can see that it would take me to google.com. Of course, I need something that starts with www, unless they change that. Let's start, let's try. Let's see if I type andreafedi.com. No, yeah. So it doesn't, doesn't have to be, uh, something starting with www. Now, the amateurish nature of this operation, it's simple, it works right away, it's easy to type, easier, it takes less time, but the issue with this approach, as you can see from the uh, tip showing what link, the place where I'll be going to, is that 
if you start with www or you just add .com, .edu, etc., is that automatically you're directed to the non-secure version of the, of, the, of the website. And of course, you can visit my website even from the non-secure address of HTTP instead of HTTPS. But your browser, especially your corporate browser, if you're an employee, might stop you and say, don't go there, it's not secure. And in fact, it might not be secure to visit a website without the HTTPS um, because that allows a larger degree of control for uh, any plugin from mal malware bytes or uh, another virus, antivirus program that you attach to your browser. So there is that limitation to keep in mind. Of course, it goes without saying that I can just type And if I want something bold, I can type control B and then type bold. I can type control B again and continue. And therefore, you know that you can use control I for italics, control U for uh, underlined and probably control S for strike. Let's see. No, control S doesn't work. Otherwise, as usual, you can also select a portion of the text. Let me put this higher up on the screen so everyone can see. I can select any portion of the text and apply control I, for example, to make it italics and you see that the toolbar is now marking this as such because of course there is a toolbar there is an applet so i can also use that once i select to apply some kind of formatting this is part of the new features this kind of toolbar uh, with with different kinds of formatting including styles did not exist in the initial versions of Evernote during the 2010s and up until the end, really, of the 2010s, the formatting inside Evernote was quite limited. So let's review the other uh, options that I have on this toolbar. So I can define something. Let's see, this is a title and an H1 title at that. So I can go to this drop down and define that as a large header. I don't need to select it. I just need the cursor to be there and that will become a title. I can also do something slightly more advanced, not as advanced as in Word or similar tools, similar programs. But if I select this, that was the default formatting, then I can modify, so let's say I give it this nicer font. I make it bigger. I make it bold and underlined, okay? Now I've made those changes to any portion of the text I can go back to this and expand the large header section. And as you would be able to do with Word or Google Docs, I can update this style to match. And from this point on, let's see if I can create a heading with the number sign. Yeah, I can. So that's another shortcut. This is another section of course and let's see if i do two number signs that would be this is a sub section title etc okay and that applies to other things 
you have three levels as you did in Notion. You have three levels for headings, right? They call it large, medium, small. And you see even from the language of the interface that they're catering to a personal user's audience because otherwise they would say H1, H2, H3, heading one, heading two, heading three, which is what a professional would expect. It's a bit childish to call it a large header, a medium header. And of course, as you can see, I can also change the colors, right? So if I select this and then I opt for, let's see, orange in here, and then I update that to match, then that applies to other properties as well. In fact, it seems like, yeah, no, no, it, it automatically formatted the, the other. However, this, I believe, is limited to a single node. I don't think it propagates. Let's see if it does. Let's create another node. Let's format something as a first level. You see, this is my title. It didn't propagate to any other node. So whatever you do with the style, you'll have to do it with the others. Of course, you can create a template, in which case by selecting the template you designed at the beginning when you created the note, you would be able to replicate the formatting, okay? But it's not as, as quick as it might happen in other word processors. I was saying before that I've, I've, for I've, my, my preference, you can keep the toolbar on at all times or you can make it disappear and appear whenever something is being done to the text. So as I said before, you can select the style for your H1, H2, H3 titles, and then normal text would be the body of the text, and you're limited there, that, that's the end of it. You're limit, somewhat limited in the number of fonts, but that's to be expected for this kind of program. You, you have a, a wide selection of sizes for your fonts, a wide selection of um, colors also, as I said before, you, here you have your bold italics underline button. You can select and highlight part of the text. If I click, now I have selected. It's good for note taking. It's good for um, studying, doing lower level kind of research. As I said, one of the best features if you're using this as a note taker is that you can combine your notes with a recording at some point when you think that you should, that this part of a class uh, is, is to be uh, taken carefully under consideration. You don't want to type all the words. Uh, instructions are being given about an assignment and they'll be given in a minute. You press recording and you attach that recording to a note, and, and we can try that in class. Of course, you can start lists from here as well, right? You just click and type something and go on, or you select numbers, type something and go on. And you can also select from the toolbar a list of items and continue. And instead of writing a link or pasting a link that will make it clickable, you can create it from a menu that will allow you to add a link and then give it a label if you don't want the link, if you want the text to say Google. And then in here, you will put HTTPS www.google dot com then you have that kind of link created over there 
and anywhere I want, I can add more spaces, which is very practical. And the toolbar is not limited by anything other than this, the width of the screen. Otherwise, I'll be able to see more. Of course, I can choose the alignment. I can add indentation, which is not doable in Notion other than with workarounds. You can do strike through, superscript, subscript, okay? And look at the last, you probably won't be able to see it because of the brightness, limited brightness of the projector, but the last two that are grayed out are simplify formatting and remove formatting. I'll show you an example of what I mean. Uh, I, I opened Wikipedia before, let's say Super Bowl. Okay, I select big chunk, and of course I'm selecting a soup of different things, exactly for that reason. I go back to my note, nope, there it is, and I just press Control V, and I paste everything. It's so complicated that it takes time, right? And let's see what they've done. Yeah, you see the, 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 the sidebar, the images, but let's see if at this point I can simplify this. I go to more. No, it didn't do it. The, the simplification was, was done. I would have, instead of copying it here, I would have to import the whole page and then I could simplify the formatting so that instead of having a multiplicity of fonts, a complex layout retained from a website, I would have a vertical deployment of the text, a vertical deployment of the images, the same font throughout the material that I copied from the internet, right? Because otherwise, if I just use Control V, uh, the programs will try to import the formatting of the websites as well, okay? So I can simplify formatting, I can remove formatting from here as well. Let's look at this, at the rest of the interface. I can see from here, you see, I have the notebook inside which the note was created. And the next icon that appears allow me to move this note to another notebook if I want to. Next, in here, I see only you because this note has not been shared with anyone else. When I click share, I have two options. One, which is what you will be doing when we all work on our wiki on the YouTube, on the Evernote experience. I click on shareable link, and then it takes a few seconds, at least on my computer, as I said. It's an ARM processor computer, so the, everything we see here is being run into an emulation because it doesn't have native 64 bits uh, and the 32 bits version of Evernote is not, not good. So after a few seconds, I have a link. It changed. You've seen that it changed. It tells me that anyone with the view, with the link can view. And that's the only option with links. Even if you go here, anyone with the link, you see that there are, there are no options other than to disable that. But it doesn't matter, it's good enough for us. Anything with the link can view this, it means not just within Evernote, it means also on your browser, right? So this is the kind of link you will be sharing with me, copying this link and sending it to me. Otherwise, normally you would also be able, but we're not going to do that, we'd also be able to add someone's email name if they're already part of your group in Evernote, which is not the case. But otherwise, you put someone's email there, and then you can select different kinds of privileges. And as usual, going from the bottom to the top, you have everything on the higher level includes the lower level. So can view is just that. Someone can look at the page and read it. Can edit means view and edit. 
can edit and invite means that it can view, edit, and also invite other people to the page. So that would be the full rights, the full set of privileges in this particular program, okay? So, as I said before, for now, for the digital assignment on Evernote, we'll just use the link and you'll share that link with me. If you decide later on to make Evernote the digital tool of your final project, of your digital project, then you would add my Stony Brook email account inside the invite someone box so that I can <coughs> see not just one note, but I can see everything. And also, unless they've changed that in recent iterations, uh, sharing something through a link would not allow someone to look at the tags, how the note was tagged, whereas full sharing allows someone to see how you tagged your notes. Okay, so that would be the share and I'll leave it as it is and you see that only you has become two avatars because anyone with this link, if I make this link public, anything with this link can access, can view this particular note. Let's look at the ellipses, the three dots, and you have a few easy more actions. So you can, once again, open the share menu from there if you want to. And you can see that sometimes there are a few key keyboard shortcuts, but not too many of them. It's really made for a tablet, a phone with a touch interface, or a mouse. So you can copy this to another location. So essentially you duplicate this. You can duplicate this note within the same notebook. You can edit the tags, right, and add tags. And of course, when I'm adding tags, for example, if I start writing testing, right? It's looking inside my list of tags and then helping me select one. I'll just save. I just want to show you that when you move to the bottom of the page, that's where you also can just type and add notes with the same kind of autocomplete Evernote. Now, unfortunately, what is missing, again, unless they've done it at this point, they have an update every other week. So I cannot keep track of all the changes until I see some change implemented. But one of the issue with this program for the longest time is that when, you're, when you want to use tags for a search, so inside the search box, you type tag, colon, and then you start typing the name of the tag, there is no autocomplete. So you have to know what the tag name was. And uh, they used to have autocomplete for other words, and then they stopped offering that because you, you don't necessarily have to write a tag. It is in fact somewhat cumbersome to add tags that way because everything is searchable. So I could just write tag underscore testing, and then I would find this not only if I look for testing, but if I can restrict my re search to any note that has that and doesn't have to be tag, right? It could be key testing. Just, just so that you know that this is a keyword, right? And not any word added so that you pull out certain notes and not others. Let's continue from here. You can add this to your shortcuts. If it is a note that you access frequently during a period, you can pin it to the home page, you can copy the internal link so that you can add the link. Let's see, I'll copy the app link. Now I'll go back to my second note. And let's call this test note number two. And then I'm pasting, and what I paste, the internal link comes out as the title of the notes 
Let's see what I do, what happens in here. Okay, I changed this. Let's see. No, it didn't update. So it is somewhat limited compared to Notion or uh, even DocuWiki where the title of the note would carry through any kind of link to that particular note. In this case, it stays fixed unless it takes time to, to upload, to refresh. And that's where I go. When I click, that's where I'm transported. Let's go back to the full view. I can use the note as a template so that the various formatting I apply to H1, H2, H3 normal will be carried over together with any text. I can add to the template uh, some basic text, a disclaimer that will have to appear or instructions that will have to appear on any page. I can do find, but more importantly, I can do find and replace. Match case, replace all, and now all the this have changed into that. I can, and of course, find would also highlight the words. I could change the, oh, sorry. I could change the note width to fit window or optimize readability. In this case, no change was done because I don't have enough text, but you can regulate the width that way the window again note info is a little bit like the history but limited compared to notion where you can actually see all the edits that were done i can see the title where it's located the tags when it was created when it was updated who did it especially with a team that's important and let's see. Now I can see the history from here. Oh, yeah, that, that's nice. That, that's something that did not exist before. So I can see previous versions and I have versioning. Of course, I have the upper level before the enterprise level. I have the upper level. I don't know what it's called. Professional, professional class. Uh, the, the, the $99 per year plan. And that gives me versioning that you wouldn't have with a free version. But as I said, the uh, basic uh, plan is enough for the digital assignment. If you're doing it as a digital project, I would recommend that you pay not yearly, but monthly for a couple of months of uh, subscription. But it's nice that I can go back and restore a previous version if something happened, if accidental deletions were made or someone in my team uh, did a big screw up with this note, uh, deleting or changing something that was not approved. And that was it, let's see. Oh, of course you, you can export this in a variety of formats. There is the internal Evernote format, HTML format. You can select what you include or you can export as a PDF, which is always nice. Let's see what happens when I want to include a YouTube video in this. Okay. Okay, so let's consider this video. During the pandemic, during COVID, I took on watching uh, travelers, Italians, couples, usually the travel through the world of course no one could leave the house in 2020 or you were very limited but i could see people who are still trying to travel through the world and and this is one of those couples right now they're in greece with this mini minivan which is smaller than a regular car but big enough to be able to sleep in it or even they have a kitchenette so let's click share i'll copy the link I'll go back here and I'll place it. Let's place it here. Let's say this is a 
YouTube video and I press control V and the moment I press enter you see that the video is embedded nothing could be easier and again this was added later on it was not in the initial versions and the video can be played provided of course when you post the video on YouTube you specify whether you're allowing embedded video to run and sometimes those uh, rights are not given because some people may be afraid that uh, someone will make money off of their content with this kind of deep linking. Okay, so as you can see, I can play in here and see Paolo and Angela in, in Southern Greece. And although this was embedded right away, I can still click on the arrow, click on the ellipses, and then you see I have the other option. I can have a larger preview, a full width preview, expanding the size of the video. And you know that in Notion, you can actually give it any size. You just drag uh, the, the, the sides and you can, you have absolute control over the size of the video. In here, you have once again, just three options. The Goldilocks way, small, large, full width, or you can limit this to just the title. Although I don't see the title, it just said YouTube video. I would have wanted the title of the video. Can I modify this? Oh, it just runs. Okay, well, not, not entirely satisfactory. And I'll go back to full width preview. And again, this is what we will do also. Um, as far as images, unlike Notion, you cannot use the link to an image on another side to import that image into the system. What you have to do is either save an image and then upload it, or you have to copy the image, which is quite easy. So let's go back to Super Bowl and let's find an image in here. Okay, no, no. so small. Let's see if this is better. Okay, so I copy the image by right clicking on it. I go back here and I do control V. Oh no, I cannot do that. Can I? Oh yeah, no, no, it just took some time. <laughs> it surprised me. So you can actually copy an image. And of course, uh, if you have that capability of um, being able to copy something from the screen, you can also take a portion of the screen and then the screenshot you've captured appears in here, of course. And then you can also resize it. This time, if you take it, you have to take it from this corner, otherwise it won't work. From the top left corner, you can resize this image and uh, you can add a caption yeah, you can edit and annotate. Yeah, that, this is nice. Uh, so initially they have a separate app called Sketch to do these things. Now you can, oh, you can add an arrow, but you can just right circle something in different colors. You can make your own arrow save and of course what you save so for small personal things is very practical very powerful the phone version allows you to do all of those things quite easily and the app on the phone is very light so it doesn't take a lot a big effort uh, to keep all those things 
um, you cannot really make a table of content. You have to, it's not automatic. You have to create it yourself. As I said, it, it is essential to either add tags or to uh, include keywords. And of course, I've gone through the interface, the toolbar and the top in, of the interface, but there is this thing that can replicate some of those things and do even more, right? From here, for example, I can add a task. No, let me put it here, otherwise it won't allow me. Okay, and I can put finish your demo of Evernote and I can assign this to Friday. I can add a time and the time will be 10, 30, no, 30, okay, a.m. Okay, and now I have, I can add a reminder, right? 30 minutes before, I can flag it for my own purposes. I can assign the task to someone if I'm working with a team, I can delete the task or I can review everything that I've done. And of course, once I'm done, I can simply do that. And there are more things that I will demonstrate on Friday, but you've seen pretty much everything and everything is very user friendly although everything is a bit more limited in some respects than other digital tools.